Hello everyone, I am the Meta Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on the face card from the Black Green Commander Precon for Call Time, Laughter Will Blade of the Elves. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube, while higher tier patrons get access to the VIP section of my Discord server as well. You can find a link to both down in the description. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Lathro is a 2-3 Elf Noble with Menace for 2 generic, 1 black, and 1 green. She has a triggered ability and an activated ability that play amazingly well together. Whenever she deals combat damage to a player, you create that many 1-1 one -one Elf Warrior tokens. Tokens that can then be used with her activated ability. When you tap her down along with 10 other Elves you control, each opponent loses 10 life and you gain 10 life. At first glance, a lot of people immediately think Elf Tribal when building around Lathro. However, I opted for a Voltron build with Lord Support as Plan B. I feel the Voltron route is ideal since Lathro can make Elves on her own if she manages to get through. Then, once you have enough elves and the other shenanigans on the board, you can take out the entire table with her activated ability, if you haven't already, via commander damage. If not, you can also swarm the board with all the elf tokens pumped by the elf lords in the deck. So let's start with the basics, getting Lathro through to deal damage. Whisper Soul Cloak and Rogue's Passage do a good job of that since they each make Lathro unblockable. As a bonus, the cloak also gives Lathro Shroud. Keep in mind that this can be a double-edged sword since this prevents you from targeting Lathro with any boons or equipping her with anything else. For instance, Timberwatch Elf wouldn't be able to target Lathro if she had Thra Shroud. And this Elf is busted since it essentially doubles the amount of Elves you control plus whatever power Lathro already had. Not only can this get you a horde of Elves but can potentially finish someone off with commander damage. Other ways to get Lathro through is with Sword of Feats of Famine, Sword of Fire and Ice, and Sword of Sinew and Steel, which also pump Lathro plus 2 plus 2 as a bonus, getting us even more Elf Warrior tokens when she gets through. I feel like these are the best swords in the deck, especially the first one. But not because Sword of Feast and Famine is already the best Sword of X and Y, but because of how busted it is with some of the spicy tech in the deck. The only downside to Sword of Feast and Famine is that it gives Lathro protection from black and green, so we can't target her with our own black and green effects if she had Shroud. So no Timber Watch Elf targeting her like earlier. However, untapping all of our lands is busted if all of our non-token creatures were also lands. A Shaya Soul of the Wild turns all of our non-token creatures into forests. This means we can sing in with Lathro when she's equipped with Sword of Feast and Famine, create a ton of elf warrior tokens, and then she, along with any other mana dorks or non-token elves we tap down for mana, will untap due to being lands. This allows us to then tap her down along with 10 other elves to drain the table for 10 life. Not only that, but Ashaya also protects our non-token creatures from an overload of Cyclonic Rift, Planner Cleansing, and more. We'll see some more shenanigans along this vein in a minute. We can also pump Lathra with our elf lords, Elvish Clan Caller, Dwinan Gilleaf Dian, Azuri Renegade Leader, Jiraga War Caller, Kaiza, and Pride of the Perfect each pump our elves, with Kaiza being the exception in the sense of her being an elf that pumps all of our green creatures regardless of creature type, as well as also pumping herself. With Izuri, we do have to sink mana into him, but it's worth it since he gives all of our elves overrun each time, which goes a long way in a deck like this one. Granted, these elves will also pump our elf army, so if it ends up being faster to simply alpha strike the table than to tap down and drain with Lathro, we'll also be able to do so. Getting these out early is still beneficial since they will pump Lathro and then stay pumping the elves. Lathro creates afterwards, thus compounding your opponent's situation all the more. We can also just dump all these elves and more later on with Kindred Summons. Even if we start off by just smashing face with Lathro and accruing elves, those tokens still count for when the Kindred Summons resolve. With enough elves on the board, we can potentially cheat in all of the elves in our library onto the battlefield. The deck's running 19 elves in it, so you're more than likely to cheat the rest of them onto the battlefield by the time you resolve this. It has a hefty casting cost, but this deck can generate a obscene amount of mana for obvious reasons. As I mentioned, with Sword of Feast and Famine and Ashaya, untapping our creatures go a long way in abusing Lathro's ability and potentially draining the table as quickly as possible. Vitalize, Mobilize, Patron of the Orochi, Quest for Renewal, and Seedborn Muse do just that. I love Vitalize and Mobilize because they only cost 1 mana and untap all of our creatures. This untaps our mana dorks as well as the other elves we tap down when paying for Lathro's activated ability. There's a one-time use only deal, but it's worth it since it's essentially a drain spell and ritual for 1 green mana. Patron of the Orochi is also a one-time use only deal, but only because it's once per turn. Keep in mind that Patron is green, so it untaps itself when it ability resolves. So this means that we can simply activate it during each turn in order to once again activate Lathro during our opponent's turns too, potentially draining for 40 life with each full turn. Patron also untaps our forest, so it can also be used to accelerate our mana. It does cost 8 to cast, but that's not an issue in a black-green elves deck. 
Quest for Renewal untaps our creatures doing each other untap step, but only if it has 4 or more counters on it, which isn't a problem since we are constantly tapping down creatures with this deck. Seedworm Muse has no such restrictions and just straight up untaps all of our permanents each untap step. That being said, Quest for Renewal isn't so bad in comparison. The deck is running Ambush Commander, which does something similar to Ashaya but inverted. It makes all of our forests into 1-1 green elves. So not only will our forests benefits from our lord effects, but they can also be tapped down to help activate Lathril. On top of that, they will also get untapped with Quest for Renewal since they're creatures now. Ambush Commander's epicness in the deck doesn't stop there. For 2 mana and sacrificing an elf, preferably a token, you can pump Lathril plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn and just get even more elf tokens. Again, keep in mind Shroud and Protection from green. Concluding our untapping hijinxes, Wirewood Lodge can help with at least untapping an elf, in this case Lathril. That way we can attack with her and then untap her afterwards to activate her ability. We can also just untap her to use her ability twice if we have enough elves for it. Or we can just untap any other elf like Timberwatch Elf or Mana Dork that taps down for a lot of mana. It's just amazing here. Other ways of abusing Lathril's abilities without untapping it is thanks to Illusionist Bracers, Lithoform Engine, and Rings of Bright Hearth. The braces are busted since we can drain the table for 20 life with just one activation. Untap all of your creatures once and then it's game over. The engine and rings can also do the same if we use them to copy Lathro's activated ability. However, the engine is the best one here since it could also copy Lathro's triggered ability, meaning that we can also use it to essentially double the amount of elf warrior tokens she creates. It's also useful to copy any instant, sorcery, or permanent spell we cast, so there's that as well. But it's primarily used for both of Lathro's ability. Shaman of the Pack is a bit of a backup effect to double up on Lathro's effect. With enough elves on the board, we can finish off that stubborn opponent. Or, if we had Lithoform Engine, create a token copy of it on the cast for double the effect. And then we can create even more copies of the token afterwards. But, realistically, this is more of a way to take a huge chunk of life away from an opponent for just 3 mana while also being an elf. On the topic of tokens, the deck's running ways to maximize our efforts by creating more elf tokens. Freely's Lanoir's Fury and Tuberkel can create an elf token each turn without losing any loyalty in the process. Freelies is amazing in the deck since she can also be used to naturalize with her minus 2 or draw us into an insane amount of cards with her ultimate. Tiberkel is also amazing since he turns each elf into a mana dork. Granted, they'd only tap down for black mana, but that's not an issue. His emblem is beyond epic in this deck since you draw 2 cards from each elf spell you cast. Notice that it's not limited to elf creature spells, so any tribal spells you cast will also trigger it. Tribal spells like Elvish Promenade. Elvish Ambush is in the deck too since it's essentially a better Elvish Promenade since it's an instant. In any case, these spells basically duplicate the amount of elves we control since they create an elf token for each elf we control. Including these in the deck is a no-brainer. Similarly, Second Harvest is a 4-costed instant that doubles the tokens we control. This is amazing when combined with Lithoform Engine as mentioned earlier since it doesn't restrict which tokens are being copied. So if the engine created a token copy of an artifact or enchantment, we can double that token as well. Doubling Season and Parallel Lives are also obviously included for doubling the amount of tokens being created. Not only are their inclusion pretty self-explanatory, but Doubling Season also doubles the amount of loyalty counters Freilies and Tivar enter with, thus allowing us to get Tivar's emblem the moment he hits the battlefield. We can also create elf tokens with Imperius Perfect. It might seem slow because it's one at a time, but once we get our untapping hijinxes online, we can create many more. It's also an elf lord, so that's that as well. So this is a pretty busted elf for a Lathril deck because it performs both things that we want for Lathril. Not only can we use these tokens and creatures to power Lathril, but the deck itself by drawing us a bunch of cards to not run out of steam. Return of the Wild Speaker, Rich Cards Expertise, and Soul's Majesty are amazing for when Lathril is sufficiently powerful. So these spells are amazing when we're able to get really tall with her in order to dig deep into our library. Conversely, or I should say complementary to these, is Regal Force, Collective Unconscious, Shamanic Revelation, and the Feed Half of Mouth to Feed to draw us cards depending on how many creatures we control. Feed requires the creature to have a power of 3 or greater, which shouldn't be that difficult with just a couple of lords on the board. Regal Force might be a bit costly at 7 mana, but that's not that difficult to accomplish here. It's also then a 5-5, which is a significant enough body. Beast Whisperer and the Great Hedge can also synergistically draw us cards since they're creature-based. Beast Whisperer might not draw us all that many cards in a game since the deck's only running 23 creature cards, but it's also an elf so it benefits from everything else in the deck and is still a way to draw cards. The Hench will also draw us cards off of the forest entering the battlefield if we also have Ambush Commander on the board. Oh, and it puts a plus one plus one counter on creatures that trigger it. It's also cheaper to cast the stronger Lathril is. As a bonus, it can also tap for double green and gain us life too. Even so, Necropotence is the best card advantage card in the deck. Not only are we gaining a ton of life with this thanks to Lathril's ability, but since we're not actually drawing the cards, Necropotence laughs in the face of effects from Hull Breacher, Necrosar, Consecrated Sphinx, Smothering Tithe, etc. So this card only gets better with age, which is crazy. We do have to exile any cards discarded, so Reliquary Tower is included to prevent that. I know a lot of content creators advise against playing this land, but just because it doesn't go in every deck, doesn't mean it doesn't have a home in some decks. 
With Reliquary Tower, we can activate Necroponents as many times as we want without worrying about exiling away any cards beyond 7, all without taking up a slot in the deck, especially in a 2 colored deck like this one. Naturally, the reason we don't want to run out of steam and be able to dig through our deck is for answers. Thanks to Lathro's colors, we can run Assassin's Trophy, Beast Within, Wind Grace's Judgment, and Casualties of War. The first two are amazing instant speed catch alls and don't really need explaining. The last two neither, since these are amazing in multiplayer games like Commander, especially Wind Grace's Judgment for being an instant. In Garruk's Wake, Plague Wind, and Kindred Dominance are also no brainers here. These one sided wraths allow us to finish off opponents with our elf army by wiping their boards. Granted, they're also useful if we simply need to reset their board state if they're too far ahead, regardless of our own plans. They might seem overcosted, but this deck generates a ton of mana, as we will soon see. As for protecting against removal, Swift of Boots and Lightning Greaves are obvious includes. The boots are the ideal equipment for Lathro for what I've been mentioning. Sometimes we want to target her with our own effects, but aren't able to if she had Shroud. So while the Cloak and Greaves can protect her, we do have to play around them. As for the mana we generate in this two-color deck, naturally we have to run some mana dorks. Lanoir Elves, Finhorn Elves, Elvish Mystic, Elves of the Shadow, Boreal Druid, and Deathrite Shaman not only help us if we get them in our opening hand, but they're elves that can be used to activate Lathro or smash face when pumped up enough. Deathrite Shaman might not always tap down for mana, but the deck is running enough fetch land so we can just use our own for mana. It can also disrupt graveyard decks, so it's great here. Canopy Tactician and Janowar Tribe are a bit better since they can tap down for 3 mana. They might cost more for that, obviously, but they are well worth it, especially when we're untapping our creatures. The Tactician is especially useful since it's also an Elf Lord and easier to cast as well. However, the best mana dorks by far are Priest of Titania and Elvish Archruid. The deck might not have a lot of mana sinks, but tapping down for a huge amount of mana will help us play our entire hand if possible. Or we can also just sink as much as we can into Azuri if he were on the battlefield. The Archruid is also an Elf Lord, so there's that too. Running a mana base depending on dorks can be fragile to wrath effects, but keep in mind that these are elves, so they synergize with the deck in more ways than one. However, to diversify the mana acceleration, the deck's running Nature's Lore, Three Visits, Far Seek, and Into the North. Into the North is slightly better than Rampant Growth here, since the deck's running all basics as snow. Since the land enters the battlefield tapped anyways, it can also ramp for the new Snow Duel type land, which answers tapped anyways, so it's still good here. In fact, it's even better than Farseek in the deck since Farseek will get the land enter tapped as well but can only ramp for swamps besides dual type lands. Soul Ring and Mana Crypt need no explanation especially when Lathro has a 2 generic in her cost which these can very easily pay for. We're still diversifying our mana acceleration between rocks, dorks, and ramp but ramp will always be the safest way to accelerate for mana due to so many players refusal to run land destruction effects to put decks like these in their place but that's a discussion for another day. Speaking of, these can also pay to activate Nykdos Shrine to Nyx, which can tap down for a ton of mana, particularly in green, due to how many green mana symbols are present in the casting cost of most of the permanents we'll have on the battlefield, so it's a no-brainer here. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 8 fetch lands, Bayou, Overgrown Tomb, Woodland Chasm, Command Tower, Guildleaf Palace, and Ancient Tomb, as well as 12 snow-covered forests and 3 snow-covered swamps. These snow lands are incredibly useful thanks to the Into the North, but if we don't need the land to enter untapped, then we can crack a fetch for either Woodland Chasm or Overgrown Tomb and have them enter tapped. As with all of my deck techs, most of the budget is in the mana base since these are the easiest substitutions to make without significantly compromising the performance of the deck. So you can just as easily swap out Bayou, the fetch lands, and mana crypt for budget substitutes and the deck will run just fine. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Lathril Blade of the Elves. As I mentioned in the beginning, I focus more on Lathro as a Voltron commander that can simultaneously become a swarm deck depending on how your game is developing. It's not an elf tribal deck in the strictest sense, but it's also including more things centered around Lathro and her abilities, more so than simply an elf tribal deck packed with 30 plus elves and boons. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the Brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link, that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Kirby, and happy brewing!